Hi, and welcome to this demonstration of the Layer 7 OAuth Tooltip. To begin, let's talk about the issue of data proliferation. The amount of data being generated by humans is growing at an incredible rate. It's actually doubling every two years. Much of that is user-created content, and with the current popularity of social networks, mobile applications, and content sharing, we need to be able to access this data in a secure and repeatable manner. Often, these resources, access to these resources requires credentials, most commonly a username and password. But providing credentials to a third party to retrieve that data for you is insecure. So we needed an open identity federation mechanism, and the industry responded with OAuth. OAuth, which is short for Open Authorization, is a series of standards and specifications that utilize existing identity and protocol specs to provide an open mechanism for authorization. It relies upon pre-existing trust relationships between applications, and it outsources authorization to trusted sources. It swaps credentials for a trusted token and maintains the security of your original username and password. Unfortunately, these specifications are in flux and often vaguely defined, leaving a lot of room for personal preference and interpretation. Any rigid implementation of these OAuth specifications won't hold up when dealing with real-world scenarios. That's why Layer 7 created the Layer 7 OAuth Toolkit. It provides support for a variety of OAuth scenarios and configurations, including OAuth 1.0a, 2.0, and OAuth Wrap. These can be two or three-legged implementations. We support multiple signing and hashing mechanisms, and we provide a simple declarative policy interface that allows you to combine the basic operations necessary for OAuth into a functional whole. You can do crypto, hashing, orchestration of composite workflows, and you can end up acting as either an OAuth token producer or consumer. And you see two examples here where you can generate, hash, and sign a token, or you can validate and accept a token. Let's take a look at this graphically. First, you have a user sitting at a computer making a request for a page on a web application. That request is redirected to an authentication, an authorization server um, that has some knowledge of uh, the end user and has access to your resources. That initiates the request response login process where you provide your credentials and the authorization server goes off, validates those credentials and responds, redirects to the original web application with an OAuth token. That web app passes the OAuth token uh, along with its request for resources where it's validated. And if everything is validated, the protected resources are, uh, are retrieved and then sent back to the original end user. For our demonstration, we'll be dealing with the scenario that fits the specification exactly. We're connecting to a web application called Peaches. Peaches collects peach recipes from around the web and wants access to your externally hosted recipe. When you go to Peaches, it redirects the user to the resource host's authorization page. That host is MyRecipes.net that has all of your peach pie recipes. It allows the user to log in. It accepts a username and password and authenticates that user via LDAP. It prompts the user for an authorization decision. Does Peaches actually have, should Peaches have access to this resource? If so, it generates a no-auth token with identities and timestamps. It signs and hashes the token and redirects the user back to Peaches with the appropriate token. Peaches goes off to the resource along with that OAuth token and retrieves your peach pie recipe. Graphically, we can see that Peaches initiates the process, the workflow. Recipes.net authenticates the user based on your credentials, authorizes the user based on your decision, and then passes it back to Peaches 
which re retrieves the resource, validates your OAuth token, and displays your PHP recipe. So let's see this in action. I've logged on to Peaches, and it wants me to use OAuth to go retrieve a resource on my behalf. I trigger that process to begin, and it redirects me to MyRecipes.net. They have my username and password that I created when I registered with them, so I'll enter those here. It validates my credentials, and it asks me if I want to authorize the web application Peaches to access my resources. If I say yes, I do, it will generate the OAuth token and send it back to Peaches. Peaches takes the OAuth token, makes a request for the resources using that token, and retrieves my Peach Pie recipe. This is similar to telling Facebook that you'd like to share your friend information with an application that you're trying to access. Now let's see how this was created using the Layer 7 Policy Manager. First, we have the OAuth-enabled web application that would like to retrieve external data on your behalf, in this case, Peaches. If it has a valid token already, it will go directly to the protected resource. If not, it will prompt you with an option to trigger the OAuth process. That redirects you to MyRSP.net's authorization server, which has you log in and provide your credentials, which it then takes and authenticates against an identity provider. It then asks you to authorize the web application. If you say yes, it generates a token with all of the IDs for all the involved parties, the end user, the web application, and the resource owner. It adds a timestamp and an expiration. It signs the token, it compresses it, and it redirects back to Peaches. Peaches now uses that token to request the resource. The token is decompressed, checked for expiration, and verified using a signature. If everything checks out, the resource is returned to the application, and there's one more delicious peach pie recipe in the world. You can see how decomposing the OAuth specification into its relevant parts, sign, verify, hash, check timestamp, log, audit, can allow for maximum flexibility with, when dealing with various OAuth implementations. As the, as the specifications change and enterprises implement their own versions, you'll be able to quickly and easily adapt to those changes. Thank you for taking a look at our demo.